perspective with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? My name is Faune. Faune. And this week we will be making and thinking about what's around us in our neighborhoods, lawns, parks, and streets. This month's themes has been Greeks. And to that end, we will be mapping what we see when we open our eyes wide open and start looking around. Where are we? In our home, the schools? Wherever we might be, maybe we can find a window. And what will we see? The window in my house has a beautiful, gigantic oak tree. Down the street, we have some elms and maple trees. What kind of trees do you see near you? If you don't know, you can identify trees by their leaves. For instance, in what is known colonially as Vancouver, we have these types of trees. We have an oak tree, like the one outside my house. We have a maple tree, we have a birch tree, and we have an elm tree. Today, we will be making trees, mapping streets, and creating a grid of where we live. The materials that we will need are We are going to need paper It's important that it's blank on both sides because we are going to be making marks on both sides We will also need toilet and or kitchen tissue tubes. I have plenty, but at least you will need four. We will also need mark making tools. And what I mean by that is I'm borrowing case ways of describing instruments that leave a mark. So for instance, I have a highlighter, I have chalk, I have a pen. But whatever I see that you have is welcome here. We will also need plastic sewing knitting needles or needles if you are working with someone else um, because we're going to be using it with the following materials. Cotton thread or yarn. I chose green and purple because those are my favorite colors, but if you want to add a third color, then that's also okay. Then we will also need tools. What I have here is a 31 by 42 inches tool, but as long as you have tool that is one meter long by half a meter, that should work too. 
Now the characteristic that we need for the tool is that the holes are big enough that the needle can pierce through without ripping it. So it goes through it, but it's not ripping it. And lastly, we will use scissors and glue stick. Now, remember to check in with yourself and if you don't feel confident at any point, ask someone you trust for help. Be safe in what you make and let's start having fun. So first, I went on a walk around my house and I looked up. These are the trees that I found. Although it's winter, some trees still have some leaves on them, so I could recognize them. These leaves, however, were dry and brown. Do you remember how they looked like in the fall? Red, brown, green, yellow. How about summer? Green, fresh. There were plenty of leaves. Even when we can see the trees with leaves right now, we can close our eyes and remember what they once were. If we close our eyes and we think of the spring, what colors come to mind? I think of yellow, light green, brown. So. So, we are going to need paper and our mark making tools. If you have someone with you, you can work together. The only objective here is to fill our sheet of paper with as many colors that we can think of when we think of spring. We will eventually cut this paper, so don't get too attached to what you are drawing. Just let your imagination run with what you remember about spring. For instance, when I think about spring, I think about the color brown. I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing. I'm not thinking of anything in particular. I'm just letting my hand go around the paper and making what I feel that feels right. I'm just taking a walk with my color brown in the on the sheet of paper here and there remember our only objective is to have as much color as possible on the page just thinking about spring and the colors that we remember is there anything in particular about spring that you like? Personally, I like the baby leaves that come onto the trees. After being silent for the winter, we start seeing them. The trees share these colors with us, for which I am very grateful. The spring comes to us. What other things do you remember about spring? I'm just going ahead and drawing my baby leaves here and there. We're starting to have a lot of color in the page. I like that. Another thing that I really like about spring is that sometimes some trees will bear some little fruits. 
just tiny enough for birds to pick up on them. Here, and here, and here, here. Remember to use as many colors as you can think of when you think of spring. If they are different than mine, that's perfect. We're all different. And it's okay to experiment with whatever we have in our minds right now. Just remember, we're gonna be cutting up these pages to transform them into something else. That's right, we have our beautiful spring just coming together right in front of us. I'm gonna go ahead and add yellow because sometimes we see yellow in the leaves. And see, we have a lot of color in our page right now. Yay! I'm gonna go ahead and start again over here. Just filling the page with as much color as possible. Okay. Okay, so we're almost done with our spring. I'm just adding little details now that I can think of when I think of spring. Here and there. And we're having our beautiful spring coming together in front of us. Hey, now we're gonna move on to summer. For summer, I think of the sea, I think of the color green again, I think of bright colors, so I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Remember, we only want to have as much color as possible, it doesn't matter how it looks like on the page it just has to have color and summer is a really fun month where we can go to the beach and we don't need to wear sweaters but we do need to use sunblock <laughs> I'm just thinking of that when I'm drawing and how beautiful it is to go on walks and look around The trees are always like in full bloom when it comes to the summer. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that. This beautiful, beautiful, beautiful green. In the summertime, we can also see flowers. Do you like flowers? I really like them. So I'm thinking of flowers and I'm gonna make little flower-like drawings here and there. Again, if your colors are different than mine, that's okay. 
are just thinking of the summer as we go. I'm adding another color. What I think of when I think of summer. What is your favorite activity during summer? Personally, I love to swim. So now that I turn the page over, I'm going to start again and think of those waves. For the most part, also a lot of things are green now, like the grass can be very, very tall, very tall, and you can run, or you can lay down on the grass and greet, you can go on the playgrounds. And everything's so sunny. I thought of another color now. I should bring yellow because everything is sunny. I'm gonna sharpen this. Oh, I need more. Yes. sun and the sunshine is yellow and it goes everywhere and it's okay to do this because all we want is color on the page <laughs> yay summer <laughs> so much fun This is perfect. Okay, thinking again about the sea, I'm just gonna put little marks in here. Like the sea, like the sea, like that. And then I'm just gonna draw a flower here because I feel like drawing one. Yes. Okay, now that we're done with summer, we're gonna move on to the fall. So for fall, I'm thinking of red and green and yellow and orange. Because if we look around, we start seeing how the trees change. So I'm just starting drawing what I remember from that season. What kind of things happen around fall? From my walks in my neighborhood, I remember also seeing pumpkins. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw little pumpkin like friends in here remember that someone else can also help you but i also see a little bit of green still before the leaves turn red you see some green. 
I'm just gonna add it onto my page. There's no right or wrong way to do this. We're just letting our hand guide us wherever it wants to go. Like taking a walk. But instead of going outside, we're staying in and drawing onto the paper. What we remember. I also see some yellow sometimes. I'm just gonna add it onto the paper. What other colors do you think of when you think of fall? You can start adding them here. Remember to try to leave as little blank spaces as possible. If you see any gaps, fill them. kind of yellow that I want to add. I'll be adding it where I see blank spaces. Then I'm gonna return to red. just focus on the blank spaces on the sheet of paper I'm trying to feel that go ahead and do it here again. Lily, you can also speed up this one. Thank you. Okay, so we're almost done with our fall. I'm just adding more color so that nothing is left blank. Yes, perfect.
and we have our fall fall and fall now we're gonna move on to our current season which is winter for winter I'm thinking that when I go on walks things tend to be a little bit more dry now so winter is our current season what what do you see right now in my window I see these colors a lot and sometimes just the tiniest bit of red here and there on my tree but I also see some light colors when I think of the lights that are used sometimes to decorate houses so these are the colors that I'm gonna use this time this is our last season and I'm happy we're here now I'm gonna go ahead and just feel the color, feel the page with color. Just thinking of my walks during winter and how the trees seem to be a little bit more on the quiet side. This is our winter. So it can be dry like that. So I'm adding black, which is a little bit of a contrast with our summer colors. Do you remember? These colors are more muted. Nonetheless, they are also beautiful and they are around us, so that's what's special. And as I said, sometimes in my walks I will look at the lights people use to decorate their houses. I'm just adding little bits of color here and there because not all colors are muted during winter. It can be so cheery sometimes. Remember to look for the gaps and just fill them with the colors that you have in mind. I'm going to add blue because sometimes the lights are blue too. And lastly, just a little bit of orange, because sometimes I see that color too. Yeah. And if I see any gaps, I'm gonna use the color red and try to fill them. We have our winter in one side, then we're gonna go to the other. And repeat the same operation. We are thinking of winter. And during winter, the, late, the days are shorter. So sometimes, things become a little bit more dark but that's okay those 
cute and everything. black now and just make circles because I feel like those represent winter sometimes see I'm trying not to leave any gaps to add a little bit of color of the lights that I remember during this month so it's not all quite winter is also the season where we get all cozy and we wear sweaters and we try to be warm so all seasons have very nice things to them. If you see any gaps, fill them. And lastly, I'm adding my orange color. And if I see any gaps, I go after them. Good. So now we have winter on one side and on the other side. Let's look at all of our seasons together. We have a spring. We have summer. We have fall. And we have winter. See how different they are between one another? They all represent different stages of the year. Look how many colors we can find during the seasons. Right now we're in winter, but it's different from the summer. Same thing goes from fall and spring. You can have as many as you want of this. I went ahead and completed a few more. But for now, for our activity, you need four. One for each season. We're gonna transform this into something else, but before that, we need to practice how to draw leaves. Okay, so we're gonna need paper again and our mark making tools. Because we're gonna practice how to draw the leaves that are around us. What's important here is that we simplify the form of the tree leaf. So not copying it, but drawing inspiration to make a more simple outline of the tree leaf. It's very important that we start with a long stem. Once we have our long stem, we're going to draw inspiration from the leaf and not copying it, but drawing inspiration from it to make a simple outline of the tree leaf. Okay, this will be my oak tree leaf. Now I'm moving on to a birch tree. 
and again I'm gonna need a long stem and once I have a long stem I'm gonna look at the leaf and draw it best I can in a simple one hand motion of the tree leaf now we have our birch tree now let's move on to the elm which looks quite similar but this one's wider and this one's a little bit long so let's try to make it look different starting with a long stem then we follow the tree leaf and now we got it this is our elm tree and lastly we have maple tree as we can see this one has a lot of edges but what we're trying to do, just what we did with this one, is to make it more simple. So, starting with a long stem, we're going to simplify this form best we can. Just drawing inspiration from it, but making it more simple. So it's easier to cut out okay you can practice this as much as you can I've been practicing for a bit so I'm gonna bring in the seasons now okay so here are our seasons we have winter and our fall and our summer and our beautiful spring I'm gonna start working with winter and leave the rest aside So for winter, I'm going to be drawing an oak tree, oak tree leaf. But for that to happen, first I got to fold my sheet in half. Once it's in half, we'll go ahead and fold it once more in half. And lastly, just one more. Once more in half. Okay. And now, instead of having a full sheet, we have a rectangle. This is what we will need. We're going to go ahead and draw... our oak tree oak tree leaf <laughs> we're gonna draw our oak tree leaf with a long stem and following my previous drawing an oak tree. Perfect! We have it! I'm gonna put it aside. And now, let's bring in the fall. And do the same thing. We're gonna fold our page in half. And then once more in half. And lastly, a third time in half. That's perfect. Now, 
we're gonna be drawing our elm tree, I believe. So remember to start with a long stem first. And once we have it, we can start drawing. And maybe we can fit another one here. So once more, with a long stem. And then we'll just back it here. Perfect. And we're gonna leave it aside. Moving on to our birch tree. We're bringing in summer. And we're gonna fold it in half. Once it's in half, we'll go again for another one and we'll fold it in half. Once it's in half, the very last time for the third time, we'll just fold it in half. Now for the birch tree, we're going to start again with a long stem and following our drawing. Perfect. We'll put it aside. And lastly, our maple tree. We're gonna bring in spring. But instead of folding it in half, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this in three. Together here. And then bring it this one here. I'm just trying to calculate where it will be three. Perfect. So we'll fold it in three. In three parts. This is one. We're folding it in three on uh, lengthwise. Three. Perfect. And once it's folded in three, we're gonna fold it in half. Great. And here we're gonna draw our maple tree leaf. following our drawing. So remember to start with a long stem. Once it's long, we're gonna follow our drawing. have all of our seasons and all of our trees. Now get ready because we're going to need scissors and you gotta check in with yourself. If you don't feel secure or confident to use the scissors, please call someone because this is gonna need a little bit of work. Okay, 
So as I said, we're gonna be needing scissors. It's important that you ask for help if you need it because we're gonna be cutting out our leaves and sometimes it can it can get challenging especially with these forms I'm bringing out my scissors and I'm gonna start with the oak tree I'll put this aside so I'm gonna start cutting out the oak tree Paying attention to my fingers and where they are as I cut along the line of my oak tree. See that I never put my fingers where the scissors are going to be cutting. I'm always aware of where they are as I go along. But you don't have to do this alone. You can ask for help. Being really careful. I'm cutting along the line, making sure that my fingers are never on the way of the scissors. So now we have our oak tree leaves that are from the winter season. Look how beautiful they are. Okay, but for now we're gonna set them aside. And we'll continue with our fall season. We'll remove the garbage here. And put it on our paper bin. And start cutting this. Since there are two, I'm gonna first make a cut here. So that I cut them individually. Perfect. I'm gonna start cutting here. Careful with my fingers. And then I'll just follow 
the outline that we made for our tree leaves. Perfect. This one's easier. our first pack. Let's do one more. leaves that are from our fall season. We're gonna also set them aside. And put this on our paper bin. Now we have our birch tree. We're gonna cut it. Same thing. Being really careful with our fingers and where they fall. Here. It's following the outline. Perfect. done. Yay! We have our summer, our summer flowers here. That's beautiful. Our summer leaves here, sorry. That's really nice. I'll set them aside. Put this on the paper bin. And now the maple tree. And this is the one that is going to take a little bit more time and effort. But we can do it. Always making sure that my fingers are not on the way of the scissors. I will start cutting. And since we folded this page a little bit differently, it's not gonna be as thick for us to cut. To cut through like the others. fingers here. Good. Just continuing. Careful with my fingers. They are close to the scissors but they are never on the way. with my fingers close but never on the way close but never on the way
continue to cut along the line Be careful Now we have our maple trees. Let's bring all of them together. Okay, so we have spring, we have summer, we have fall, and we have winter. We have all of our seasons here these beautiful trees remember which ones are which? this is oak this is elm this is birch and this is maple now we're gonna be focusing on the trunk of the tree and setting this aside for a bit when I go on walks I pay attention to the trees around me. Look how different they are from one another. They all have different skin, they are different colors sometimes because moss grows on them. They can be crinkly, they can be smooth, they can be tall, they can be shorter. Today we're gonna be drawing inspiration just as we did with the leaves to interpret what we see into our trunks not copying it but seeing them and drawing what we see and we would like to see in our trunks and for that matter we're gonna be bringing our mark making tools and our toilet and or kitchen tissue tubes so I'm gonna be paying attention to the tree that I have here but you can always remember how the trees look like when you go on walks. I'll put more examples so you see and you can follow along as you wish. Here, here we have three examples and then I'll change them. So I'm gonna grab one of my mark making tools and just start drawing what I see on the trees I'm trying not to copy but rather creating a pattern that resembles the tree that I'm seeing Just following the lines, seeing the shadows in the tree. Seeing the light and following along. I am looking at this tree right now. now I want to do something like that so I'm gonna draw circles that 
look like the tree. have for our tree right now. Now I want to look at this tree. This one has crinkles that are wider. I'm gonna draw one that is wider. Like that. And then it has more crinkles in the middle. So that's what I'm doing here. do another one here that was just gonna be in the middle of the trunk like that good okay and now I'm gonna grab another mark making tool and continue throwing inspiration for my trees we have more here So I want to draw the moss and I'll just use this pen to do little lines resembling the moss. It's not necessarily exactly as the moss, but it has potential to be its own organism. I wonder what kind of drawings you are making now, what kind of mark making. Okay, we have one, we're gonna do another one here maybe, but this one's gonna be like that. Yes, okay. Now I see some yellow in here and I'm gonna use my highlighter and just make some highlights in there here and here maybe another one here that's bigger good and lastly with the sharpie I'm just gonna introduce some lines in here that can act as shadows. my first trunk for the tree and I'm gonna continue doing this with the next three rolls I'm gonna put this aside for now so for the next roll we're going to continue doing what we were doing except we're going to change this one's here so we have more inspiration Ooh, like this one. Let's try to do that. I'm gonna be following along the structure of the tube and maybe making this like a figure-like lines along the edge and see where it takes me because we are exploring too. We're seeing if what we do has an echo in our thinking and 
in the ways we understand what is around us. Okay, now we have that. I will continue this way. I'm looking at this tree. Rolling the tube as I go along. Good. That's what we have so far. Let's continue. I'm going to use my green to join some of the figures together. Just making some lines now. And see how they look like. And we join them. This is not looking bad. I like it. How is yours coming along? these figures to create a texture okay this is how it's looking like so far and now let's change the figure here and I want to use my yellow and just make some lines in there that might help this might be our most experimental tree so far but i like it because it's ours and this is how we draw and this is our imagination in collaboration with what we see outside. That's good. Is there anything else you want to add to your tree? You can do it. There's no limit to what we imagine and what we see, so feel free to add it as you go. Lastly, I'm gonna add, just like we did last time, like some little lines in here. That could be like a moss. And then maybe another one here. Good. <laughs> this is our second tree. Let's go on to the third one. inspiration here and just maybe even choosing new colors if we have a blue and we have a sharpie we have another sharpie another sharpie <laughs> 
we'll continue with that. Let's put this aside for now. So with my big sharpie, I'm going to make lines like that all along the tree. Let's see how they look like. Oh, this is fun. I'm just following the patterns that I see. Then another one. Then another one. This is really fun if you have the same idea you should go for it. Do it on this. So for our third tree, I went ahead and used my sharpie, my bright yellow sharpie, and added some marks. And then I brought up my green uh, pen from the past batch of mark making tools and added little stars so that it will start looking like moss and I'm gonna add a little bit more here just because it feels a little empty and I'll add a little bit more green too just so that it feels like something's living there like a little house for another organism okay we can go and move on to our fourth um, toilet paper <laughs> toilet paper tree we'll put that aside finally the last one I'll go ahead and change this so that we have more ideas I'm gonna use a um, blue pen a brush sign pen <laughs> to make lines as I go along this time not really paying attention to my images I'm just letting myself be guided by my imagination I'm just making lines along the tree
Okay. This is my fourth tree. And it's looking really nice. I really like it. So. I'm gonna bring all of our trees together now. We're thankful for the inspiration and we'll put it aside for now. We have four trees. And we're gonna bring in scissors. So remember, if you don't feel secure enough to work with scissors, ask someone to help. And with my scissors, I'm going to make cuts along the edge, just like this. Almost one inch apart, but it really doesn't matter if you do one before or after. So we have our first tree and it has all the cuts that we need. Let's move on to the second one. And we'll start making the cuts. Not too deep. Just rolling them. And getting to where we started making the cuts. Perfect. That's the second one. Let's go for the third one. This is where our leaves are gonna go. And lastly, the fourth one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Now we have all of our trees with the cuts. And we're gonna be bringing in our leaves. So now that we have our trees, we're going to bring over our glue stick and our leaves. We have fall, we have spring, we have summer, and we have winter. We're going to grab one of our trunks and grab one of our leaves and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the glue stick on the tail of the leaf just a little bit and then introduce it to one of the cut cutting space that we created careful and once it's in there you just paste it on the side like that Good. We're creating our tree now. We're gonna keep doing that with the rest of the oak tree leaves. So we have it and now we just introduce it to the slot and we're creating our own tree. Let's go again. We're gonna do that with the rest of the tree. See, it's looking fun. Put it like this. And continue with my leaves. Some leaves look special. This one. I like this one. Once it's in there, we can fold it so it's not kind of on the way. So we just fold it to the side and it starts having a little bit more shape. And then we can continue. Good, it's looking 
nice. We have two more to go. Since I have one more to go, I'm just going to paste it to the trunk itself. I think I'm going to put it right in here. Perfect. So now we have our first tree, which is an oak tree. Look at the season. This will be winter. I'm going to put it aside. And continue with our maple tree and just like the rest just like the other tree we're gonna use the glue for the tail of the leaf and then introduce it onto one of the slots that we created and fold it right place so this is starting to be our maple tree Go again, enter, and fold it a little bit. So from the inside it's looking like this. Let's continue. So now I'm gonna paste it on the trunk like this. I'm running out of leaves like that and then the last one I'm gonna do exactly the same thing paste it like that good now we have our maple tree I'm gonna put it aside here maybe then with this one I think I want to do fall season. This our fall tree. It's nice. It's looking cute. I like it. I hope you're liking it too.
Looking nice. I will fold three. Nice. And now, since we had a couple of slots left here, I'm gonna use some of these leaves just to fill it out a little bit. And then we have. Uh, spring and fall combination of a tree and maybe it looks nice together see let's use this one gonna place it on the trunk now like that and like this and finally another one so probably I will add another one to this string instead. Yeah. Perfect. So we have we have our oak tree. We have our springtime tree. And we have our fall tree. We're missing one more, our summer tree. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing, just using our glue stick on the tail of the leaf, inserted it into the slot here, and fold it a little bit so that it stays on. Glue stick. One slot here, press it, and moving on. It's looking nice. Our summer tree. Hold it a little bit. Here. Good. Fold it a little bit. And then this one, since I don't have any other spots left, I just put it in here. Like that. 
fold it. Perfect. So we have our summer tree. We have our fall tree. We have our spring tree. And we have our winter tree. Remember that at the beginning I was saying that I have a big old tree outside of my house? This is like it. Now I have my own oak tree. So lastly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a grid for these trees to have a place to play. Before focusing on the final component, I want to propose something to you. We know that grids are usually intersecting knives that form squares or rectangles. But what I want to propose to you is that perhaps a grid can be a series of intersecting lines, lines that cross each other and generate patterns. Because when we walk, we perhaps conform to the grids that are out there for us to follow. But when we walk, we can go on a stroll and propose our own ways of motion. So with this in mind, we're gonna be creating a grid that doesn't look like this, and it looks more like a careful examination of the places we walk to. With this in mind, let's bring out our final materials. So we're gonna need our plastic sewing knitting needles, thick thread or yarn, and scissors for now. I have a green color and I have a purple color, but I think I'm gonna start with the green. So first we're just gonna thread the needle with our thread or yarn with as much as we will like but that it won't be complicated as we move along the process so I think the length of mine will be about that and with my scissors I'm just gonna cut here perfect I'm gonna make a little knot at the end And now I have a knot. And let's thread my needle. This is easy because these needles are very big. I'm just gonna thread it. Well, that was easy. There. I have all of this thread to put into my tool, which is our next material that we will need. We will bring over our tool. I'm gonna spread it across my table here so that you can see what I'm doing. And this is fun because we're gonna let, just as all of our past mark makings, we're gonna let the needle guide us where we think it should go. So we enter the tool and we start going places where we think our needle might want to go. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and just thread it. Perfect. And then just like that, continue to my tool. Perfect, and every now and then just pull it to make sure that the thread is going through and is not getting entangled. So I'll continue with this. There, and just pull it. 
Okay, I'm gonna pull all the thread that I have until the very end, which will be there. And now I think I'm gonna take a left here. Here and here and here. Perfect. And then let's continue here. I think I just want to make a shape for now at the center. Here. Oop. If this happens, if you happen to pull the thread and like it just goes missing from your needle then you just can go again and thread it shouldn't be hard because these are big perfect let's continue I think I'm gonna go up and probably just make a like a square I think for now or see where it'll take me when I get to the top and it's there just pull it oh I like the form that we are getting now Just continue like that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> my thread went missing, but I'm gonna put it back in my needle. There you go. And we'll continue with this. Whoops, the camera stopped recording. So I took my time to re rearrange my table and continue with my mark making. So now that we are almost at the end of this thread I'm just gonna go through the tool once more pass it here and then once it's on the other side I will make another knot so it doesn't escape the tool once it's here I'll just make another knot Okay, now it won't, it won't move as much. So this is so far what we got. I feel like using the other color that I had, which was purple. So I'm gonna do that right now. Just need to get the thread from here or if you have yarn. You don't have to go through this process more than once. Good. Now we got the thread and I'm gonna grab just as much as possible but that it won't make my job more tedious or anything so maybe let's see I'll grab that much 
I'll cut it. Perfect. And I'll continue. Well, first I'll make a knot. Once I have a knot here, I'll take a look on my thread and thread my needle. Perfect. Now, once I have it, I'll start again. I'll start somewhere in here. Just once from the back side I'll pull it all the way over there and now I can continue and just let the needle guide me to wherever it feels like going if there are more than one person following this it'll be faster and it will be also fun because you can start collaborating, working together. I got a little knot here. So I'm pulling on my thread until I make a line and I'll continue here. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Just listening to where the needle wants to go. And going there. And I think this line of thread wants to go somewhere on the left. We see that it starts getting a little tight, we can just do this so that there's a space for the thread in the tool and it doesn't start to look all tight in the tool. I'll continue here. This is looking so much fun already. Okay. I'll go this way. I'll just continue thread and pull I'll continue this way. I'm almost at the end of this thread.
Okay, and now that I'm here, at the end of this, I'm just gonna go in once more. In here. And now that it's on the back side, I will make a knot here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm here and I'll just make a quick knot like that. Now it's secure. So let's see what we have so far. We have purple and green thread. It's looking good. It looks like our mark making from before, from the seasons. This is the grid that we are creating together. I'm gonna go for another line of green. Okay, now we're here. We're gonna continue with what we're doing, but we're about to come to an end of this thread. It's about to touch another line of ours, which I'm very excited for. We'll pull. There we go. And see, it's about to touch this one here. We'll just go over and under and over and under and pull it. And have one last moment here where we go through the tool we receive it on the other end. Oop, we went exactly through the same one. So let's go over there. Good. And then come back. Good. Receive it on the other end. And once we have it here, we can make a knot. Flip it over. And we'll make a knot. Perfect. These are the lines that we have so far. They're intersecting each other. And going all around our thread. All around our tool. Good. So... I'm going to make one last one, a purple one. And then we can start playing with all of our trees and grids. So, this is what our grid looks like. And now I'm gonna bring in the trees. With time, you can even add more trees. And maybe, maybe even add yourself to the grid. Look how many friends we have to play with. Remember our trees? We have our winter oak tree. 
We have our fall birch tree. We have our summer elm tree. We have our maple spring tree. And we added new ones. They can move in the creek. Thank you so much for joining me this week to think about reeds, trees, and the things we see when we walk around. I hope this inspires you to take a look around you as you walk and discover new things, always thinking of yourself in space and in relation to that which surrounds you. Have a beautiful week! Goodbye!